It only matters to the people being impacted. And that's Katie and George. And if they decide this doesn't matter and they're going to move on for it from it, the internet needs to move on. But the internet won't because it's not about Katie and George. They're going to project themselves onto the situation and they're going to bully both of these people into not fixing the situation because it feels better for their egos. And I know, you know what pisses me off the most is how many content creators have reviewed this and not even reviewed as many logs as we've reviewed. And there's still stuff I'm missing. But like literally, I will watch them do a live stream and they're like, oh, I haven't watched any of these videos on my own. I'm like, oh. so they don't even know what George has said. They're just assuming, they're like fighting for George on his behalf when they don't even listen to what he says. I think that Katie deserves all the support that you See, can... George and Dream both said, be nice to Katie. It is a terrible situation. It is a terrible thing, the pain that she feels. He sounds like a fucking second grader who got in trouble in class. What is this? It is- That's what I- It's a terrible thing. Pain is not good. Oh, uh, gold star. Interesting. So the 20 year old is not listening to any of the people involved and has decided he knows better than anyone that was involved. Ugh, people are so young. So the guy who wasn't involved is listening to three people who are directly involved in some capacity and going, no, I know better than everybody involved. I don't even know what to do with that. You know what I mean? Like, we really don't want to listen to victims, do we? Whether they're men or women, huh? Over the last year, we all saw one of the biggest YouTubers on the platform, Dream, get falsely accused of life ruining allegations and True. really destroyed his well, career. Well, life ruining allegations, like, God, can I say something? And I, I, I want to say this with like the most, uh, the most respect. Men getting accused is hardly ever a consequence to their life. It will have consequences in the society that actually holds you accountable. But generally speaking, men aren't held accountable. That's why we needed the whole Me Too movement, which of course is going to have issues because now we have to redefine what suck our essay is. There are little to zero consequences, depending on your culture and background, for you being accused of something. Keep in mind, Trump has been accused time and time again, and he's president of the United States, or was. Balto says, but if you're a regular guy who is falsely accused, your life can be ruined. Some men's lives will be ruined. False accusations, I think, are worse for the individual experiencing them because it feels like you're being gaslit. And I will say that is incredibly difficult. As somebody who's been like falsely accused or women have said things about me, I'm like, what are you talking about? It feels horrible. It feels like you're being gaslit. It feels like the worst thing ever. You're like, I didn't do that. But people will say things about you that aren't true. And I think that is incredibly difficult. I think that can be life ending because you don't know how to, your mental health is just shattered, right? So I think that is what's horrible. But ultimately, we live in a world where generally speaking, you'll be fine. But on occasion, bad things happen to good people or bad things happen to bad people. I just feel like it's a little, um, it's, I feel like it's too biased to pretend like the president of the United States doesn't have accusations against him for actual grape. And he got to the White House. He was guilty until proven innocent, and the only reason he barely made it out was due to his last minute response, where he was able to point out inconsistencies and showed evidence that was undeniable in order to vindicate himself. It was a humbling experience for thousands of people who instantly labeled him guilty without even hearing out his side first. But to be fair, everybody does that for everybody. Most humans do this. This is why it's so dangerous to make sure you're not just supporting someone blindly, to make sure that you are considering could somebody you like be the bad person? Or could there have been a miscommunication? I still think I had the most based view. I'm going to be real. And I agreed mostly with George that Katie can still perceive this as a bad situation and still he didn't intend to essay her. Her last message to me was August 1st, 2023. And I haven't replied to her since then. After I watched her stream, I was pretty confused. I didn't understand how her account of the story had been so different from what actually happened. A lot of the facts that she said just didn't happen at all or were phrased in ways that just make me look as bad as possible. Saying things like, um, I insisted on her playing drinking games or that she was frozen in place or that she was scared. She was having fun. She was enjoying herself. She was showing this with her body language, with the way that she smiled, the way that she laughed and just her overall general demeanor. Now, one thing that I think is very important to differentiate here is that I do believe that she regrets being affectionate with me and that that really does make me feel terrible i never want to make anyone feel uncomfortable or regret their interactions with me or anything along those lines regardless of if it's sexual or not and i am truly really sorry if i contributed 
towards that. You see how two things can exist at once? His best friend, George Not Found, got accused of sexual assault, but thankfully, this time around, things were different, and no one made any of the same mistakes as they did last time. What the fuck is wrong with you? You're a serious criminal. What the living fuck are you thinking in that moment? You gotta be out of your fucking living mind, drunk or not. This isn't a Twitter thing, this is real life. This is a, someone's life. It is a crime. It is a bad thing. They're so young. They're so young. And you're so fucking old. What are you doing? They're kids. They're teenagers. I don't think we should allow a second opportunity when we're dealing with teenagers and children. Oh. Oh, is this a retelling of the story? <laughs> Guys, please like the stream, yo. Um... But what if he didn't essay her? I don't think he did. I don't think George did essay her. I don't think that changes how she perceived the situation. But I also, like, I don't, I don't think he essayed her. Well, the problem is, okay, by definition, he essayed her according to lots of colleges and their rules. From the definition of definitely certain cultural bubbles, it is essay. So by definition, essay is, well, it depends on who, see, the problem is, guys, it depends on who's defining it. Do you understand that this is a society issue? I'm trying to get you to understand. Essay is not an objective thing, but like essay as a concept is a construct human beings created through culture to say, hey, this action here, we're going to call that essay. So according to certain bubbles, it is by definition essay. According to other bubbles, it is by definition not essay. So whether or not George essayed her from Britney's perspective is whether or not he intended to do it. So if he in his head was like, I'm going to essay Katie, that is essay. If he literally was like, oh, I think she's into me and I'm into her, I'm going to make a move. I don't consider that essay. I consider that a deep misunderstanding. So uh, it depends on who you're asking because none of this is objective. You know, I really don't like this whole black and white thinking once again, I don't want to encourage that. This black and white thinking of like, it is always this thing. This thing is a construct. We made it up. George Not Found is a 10 million subscriber Minecraft YouTuber who recently has had allegations come out against him that he assaulted another creator named Katie Bugs. But here's the case. Guys, like the stream. He said, I'm screwed. Demonetized. It's complete false allegation coming from a manipulative, malicious liar who just mm. went we have no evidence that she's manipulative, malicious, or a liar, but it's interesting that everyone runs with that. So that means she intended it. That means she planned it. We're assuming she did that. Does anyone have any actual evidence that she did that? Insinuating Katie was malicious is insinuating that George maliciously essayed her. You know, you must know this, yes? You cannot read Katie's mind. So if you assume Katie did it on purpose with no evidence and you're stating it like it's a fact, which it's not, because you don't know that. It's like stating for a fact that George meant to assault her. But we know that George didn't mean to do that. And in the same way, George said, I don't think Katie realized the situation because that wasn't my intention. And I think she really thinks that's what's happened. Again, this all happened within a four hour period, three, four hour period. And I was not given any sign of discomfort, unhappiness, or anything along those lines. And again, it was the opposite of that. She was happy, she was laughing, she was smiling, and as far as I know, everyone else in the room would have thought the same at the time. So now what I'm thinking is, why would she come out and say it like this? Why is she saying this? Now, I don't think she's purposefully being malicious or trying to hurt me or ruin my career or anything like that. But what I do think is that she is surrounded by a friend group that completely despises me and my friend group and this is quite a specific scenario that probably doesn't really happen that much especially publicly so it, it's kind of we it's kind of hard to talk about it but i think after vidcon she, she obviously had told some of her friends about what happened whether or not that was in a negative connotation i do not know i wasn't part of these conversations of course but she clearly told them about this scenario now when these people that are around you all completely despise me and my friends, they're obviously going to look on this poorly. To add context to this, she actually mentions in her stream, here I'll, I will just quote it. She says, I remember a friend seeing me in the lobby on the way and they were worried by the way I was acting and asked if I was okay. I was really drunk and I, and it was an eerie feeling like they could sense something was wrong. Now this person is in Katie's friend group and they were concerned that a group of five people were going up to Dream's room to join three additional people, which isn't 
an interesting concern to have. I actually have heard from another source that overheard this conversation and thought it was quite strange that she was worried about this. Now, I think it seems very likely that after eight months of you being around friends that hate me and my friends and constantly talking badly about us publicly as well and privately, I don't know what they say privately, but can't be any better than what they say publicly. Obviously, that is going to affect the way that you view the experience and it's going to make you look at it differently. You're going to second guess it. You're going to be thinking about it. And clearly it changed the way that she thought about it. And I just think it's completely unfair to judge me and my actions based on how you feel about it now, eight months later versus how you felt at the time, because at the time you were not uncomfortable with it. And I know I'm repeating myself a million times, but I have to, you were smiling, happy, laughing, playing along with it everything. And that's all I really have to say on the matter. Still keep supporting victims. That we can't read her mind, nor can we read George's. But we can use our own evidence to have our own opinions. You're allowed to have the opinion that you think she's this way, as long as you know that you don't know that, right? Once this guy's career destroyed. She didn't fake a screenshot. Brennan said she faked a screenshot. She didn't fake a screenshot. She corrected herself and it was accepted. George also miscommunicated in a way that was interpreted by the audience he corrected himself katie sent the wrong text message she corrected herself there's a lot i do there is something i'm fully owning up to and and clearing up right now the screenshot uh that i my recent response on twitter this is the only kind of like response thing i'm gonna give uh i will acknowledge that was a complete miscommunication there's a screenshot i said was from his friend that wasn't there for the assault, mentioned our ages and acknowledged, you know. The situation was weird. It's a real screenshot. What I got wrong and what was miscommunicated was who it was from. It was actually from instead of the guy who left or wasn't there for the assault, it was from the girl who wasn't there for the assault, um, which I acknowledge is frustrating that I got that wrong. And I didn't realize I got it wrong until after I posted it a long time a, a long time after and obviously when I don't come out and say oh I got that wrong when he's the one to come out and say she got that wrong it cr makes that into the biggest deal um I got a message from the girl that actually sent the text and was like it was a while after I already posted my response and was like you kind of mixed up who the text was from but I'm sure it won't be a big deal because it was only one of the minor things you said uh, and everything else you said in that response was way more important. Uh, which obviously we've seen uh, that was not the case. But I do acknowledge and own up to the fact I completely was wrong about that. But again, I'm saying even though it wasn't from his friend, it was yet another person in the hotel room that acknowledged the weirdness. Yes, it wasn't from that guy in the hotel room. It was from the girl in the hotel room. Like... I still think the situation, the screenshot, it's not a fake screenshot as well. It's a real screenshot. I still think it adds to the fact of, you know, people acknowledged it. So again, she didn't make up a screenshot. It was a total miscommunication. We have no proof, right, that she technically made up the screenshot. And it actually worked. His best friends have turned on him. He's lost brand deals. If his best friends turned on him, then again... There's there's this, okay, let's go back to, oh, this is good. Let's go to blind loyalty. So obviously if someone came to me and said, hey, your friend essayed somebody, I'd go up to my friend and be like, hey, bro, tell me what happened. Go ahead. And I'd be like, bro, this was literally my intention. This is what happened. I'd be like, that sounds like a huge miscommunication. Let's see if we can talk it out. Then we could talk it out and say like, is this, and is this a part of your character? Was this your intention? What was the situation? And then we could go from there. But obviously, depending on your investment in a person, you might just want to move yourself away from somebody. There's a line everyone's willing to cross. For some people, like Andrew Huberman, he's willing to lie and manipulate six grown women, including one woman he was doing IVF treatments with. That's a huge malicious. See how Andrew Huberman literally targeted women, juggled all these women, and then people don't care. People don't care that Andrew Huberman did any of these things to these women. And I'm saying we should care, but we should also have the right amount of reaction to the situation. So George touched a breast at most. If this was intentional, oops, then that's like a big icky. 
But if it was a mistake and a misreading of the situation, how horrible it is it that we're accusing him of being like a quote criminal or whatever. So again, it feels a little bit disingenuous for people to say, um, oh, his friends, his best friends moved away from him. Well, how close of friendship could they have had? Like your best friend's not going to move away from you. Your best friend's going to check in with you and see if it's true. But your shitty friends are going to move away from you because like they're willing to like trade your relationship for an easier like relationship with their jobs or their friends. Or maybe their values say, I don't want to be with anyone or be friends with anyone who gets drunk and touches anyone's boobs. Maybe that's a part of their value system. I don't like the narrative of like George lost his best friends. Well, I mean, maybe, maybe it was time for them to go. And then in terms of the brand deal, that had to happen. That just, from a brand perspective, sorry, George, you shouldn't have gotten drunk with anyone under 21 if you cared about brand deals, in my opinion. Hundreds of thousands of followers and his reputation will now forever be fucked. All over this woman- They will not forever be fucked. You're so dramatic. That is just not true. When twisting, manipulating, and in some cases just outright lying about the guy to fool the internet that he assaulted her. My story is about power and age and consent. Claims when she was freshly 18, George, being a much older man, took advantage of her when she was vulnerable and drunk by inviting her to his hotel room and insisting on her to drink alcohol while playing drinking games. Also, the fact that I said I was freshly 18, which is something a lot of people are mad about, when in reality I was 18 and five months old. My bad. Uh, what I meant to say in that original stream where I said I was freshly 18. I said I was freshly 18 and just out of high school. What I meant to say was I was 18 and freshly out of high school. I just put it in front of the wrong thing. And I do acknowledge that. Uh, but once again, I feel like the idea is still the same, whether it's freshly 18 or freshly out of high school, because I had just graduated a few weeks earlier. The idea is still there. It's still there. And these are the things I'm sorry, I do get frustrated with that because people are mad at me saying that I'm a liar because of these things instead of acknowledging the fact that he fucking admitted to doing what he did to me. Like, and we're worried about the fact that I, was, I said I was freshly 18 when I meant to say I was freshly out of high school. It's just... It, I'm... Again, and... I just, I shouldn't man. be getting frustrated, no. but hey, um, Judy, it's just it's upsetting we all seeing love you. him admit to it. He disguised it with a simple, are you ticklish? I coughed out a no and still staring at my phone. I was overly aware of the fact that we were in front of other people. The fact that everyone else was sitting around us, watching us, including my best friend, and that his hand was inching further to places I hadn't asked it to be. Again, as I mentioned before, we had previously been cuddling on this couch for around an hour, but I did place my hand on her waist under her shirt. The way it's phrased makes it sound like it just happened out of nowhere, when in reality we had been cuddling for over an hour at this point, and it was not out of nowhere. It was also around half an hour until I started moving my hand further up, and the way it's phrased just makes it seem like it happened pretty instantly and pretty quickly. There was nothing quick about it, it was very slow, and I was very cautious about it and making sure that she was comfortable throughout the process. Me and Katie were very touchy, very cuddly, and very slowly got more intimate. I've always been overly cautious with consent, and this is not just because I'm a creator. I've been like this since before I was a creator, and I think that's just the way I am and just the way it should be. Nothing came out of nowhere. Everything progressed very slowly throughout the night. And also, before I continue, I wanna make it clear that the furthest anything ever got was under the shirt touching and cuddling. Now, obviously, people don't typically ask if everything is okay, even such as touching someone's waist under their shirt before they do it. But in this case, I was extremely slow and she was engaging with me the entire time, laughing, cuddling with me, and even playfully fighting me for the game that we were playing. Again, the quote that she said, he disguised it with a simple, are you ticklish? I coughed out a no. She's implying that I'm, it's with malicious intent and that she coughed out a no would also imply that I should be able to tell that she was uncomfortable with it. She says later, he made a game out of my embarrassment where he would touch me in certain areas to make me lose the game I was playing. Now, I actually remember this quite vividly. I remember she was playing the game and there were parts where it would be very easy to lose if you were distracted. And she's right, I did do that. There were points where she was playing the game and she was at a point where it was easy for her to mess up. And I would, for example, tickle her or like squeeze her. And when I did this, she would laugh, she would turn around and smile at me. 
or she would play fight with me because I had just made her lose the game. She also says how, quote, I didn't speak or move. I remember being afraid to even breathe. I stayed there for a while, hoping my stillness could make me disappear. Now to reiterate, any time that I did this, it was met with her either smiling, laughing, play fighting with me, and there was no reason for me to believe that she was uncomfortable with it. She was not not moving. She was not not speaking. Of course, I don't believe that silence is consent. I just want to make sure that it is abundantly clear. She was visibly and physically responding well to everything that we were doing. Now, Katie does this as a mistake, right? She does put a lot on George, making the, as like, again, read mind reading him. And I think that's the mistake here. Lots of people are, we're all just writing mind reading. You know what I mean? And I think that's probably the mistake. Where then, he went on to touch her underneath her shirt out of completely nowhere. I was drunk in a hotel room with other people around me when it happened. Out of nowhere, I felt him slip his hand under my clothes, sitting next to me on the couch in front of everyone, and that his hand was inching further to places I hadn't asked for it to be. I was scared. And it did happen, by the way. George admitted it happened. So we're not arguing that he touched her. We're arguing whether or not... There was a miscommunication or he maliciously did it knowing she didn't want it. So she thinks he did it knowing like without asking her, which is true. He didn't ask her. He just did it. So that's a fact. And under lots of definitions, that's sexual assault. But where a lot of us come from is like, oh, that's not what sexual assault is. Sexual assault is like a malicious intent, which she's assuming he had because I think probably influenced from the people around her maybe, which I would argue is probably the deviation in knowledge. You don't know that he had malicious intent and assuming that is wrong. But also George did touch her without verbal consent. So again, if you want to live in a culture where you need verbal consent every time, cool. I love that. Then you have to make sure that everyone you're with agrees to that cultural expectation. Because otherwise there's going to be miscommunication. Think of it like a language barrier or just like, oh, I assumed we're all Muslim so we don't eat pork here. And then someone brings fucking chipotle pork to the barbecue it's like okay you know what i mean like we're gonna have to think about this in that way for me for britney i never needed always verbal consent it's really great i really love it i prefer it over not having it but i also don't always need it depending on the culture or situation i'm in depending on the bubble i'm in i do not expect verbal consent because it just seems weird to ask for it when they don't expect that they they usually move off vibes that's usually how it is so I, Brittany, am, I'm traveled, guys. I've been places. I know it's not the same everywhere. But for some people, they think it should always be the same everywhere. And I just think you should, you know, keep that in mind. But even before George's response, there were many things off about this initial stream. First, that Katie was apparently freshly 18 and on the market when George prayed. I think you're freshly 18 until you're 19. Brittany's opinion, you can disagree. You can be pissed about it in the comments. But I think you are freshly 18 until you're 19. And I think you are unfuckable until you're over the age of 21. If the person is like five to six years older than you, I think... You know, I have a lot of strict rules about ages, but I also think it's different depending on the individual. So I have a general rule, but then I'll make exceptions. But I have a general rule. Personally, I think you are freshly 18 until you are 19. Honor. I was freshly 18 and had just graduated high school. Maverick says, isn't also the issue if he had asked, wouldn't she have said yes? She would have said no. She's asexual and doesn't engage in sexual activity. She said she felt pressured to not move. She wouldn't have felt equally pressured to say yes. She could have felt pressured to say yes, but in her mind, she thinks she might have said no, but who knows? Like, ultimately, that's why, look, I have gotten verbal consent from men. I have gotten verbal consent from women. Those same people, if they feel any kind of shame, any kind of guilt, grownups will be like, yeah, I kind of did feel like a weird way about Britney. Oh, yeah, I did kind of feel weird about that. It's like, why didn't you say something? Because sometimes even grownups are embarrassed or grownups are having issues. And that is trauma. That's culture. That's shame. That's miscommunication. And I'm just saying as somebody who's well lived, as somebody who's had a lot of miscommunication in life, or at least it feels that way, neurodivergency plays a role. Culture plays a role. Expectation of behavior. Oh, I expected this to be okay because here I am. I even have rules in place that like I'm married. And if my friends hit on me, knowing I'm married, I would end that friendship. That's like a rule I have because some people be out here be, you know, sleeping with married women, you know, married men. So I try to make it clear to people, like if you actually hit on me while I'm married, like we're never talking again. 
But for some people, they, you know, they don't expect that to be weird. For some people, hitting on a married person is part of the thrill, right? Like, I don't know how to tell you guys this, but the world is not a very consensual place. And if you want it to be more consensual, you have got to start communicating your boundaries, which is where Katie made an issue or a, had a fault. Is she said that she felt like this is the price she had to pay to be a part of the group. Well, you shouldn't have paid it. And the dilemma is that sounds like victim blaming to people where people are like, why are you blaming people for like doing things with Weinstein if you offer them a movie role? I'm not blaming you for feeling in danger of your life. I'm blaming you for allowing a man uh, to take advantage of you for a movie role because he did take advantage of them and some of them are great. But a lot of them were people who were willing to do whatever it took to get the movie role. And I think that's a values issue, right? Not saying Harvey Weinstein wasn't a predator. He was a predator. A predator is somebody who uses something against you because they know you'll say yes to this because you want it so badly. Just because the women said yes didn't make Harvey Weinstein less of a predator. You know this, right? Just because women were willing to sleep with him against their values, does not mean Harvey Weinstein was not a predator. A predator can put you in a position where you're willing to compromise your values. That doesn't make the predator's actions separate from, or, or doesn't make the predator's actions less predatory. Guys, what the predator does and what you do are two different things. You move off of each other, but these are two different things. He is responsible for the pressure he put on these women and the way he was a predator and targeted them. And these women are responsible for not walking out of that room when they could have, that doesn't mean he's less of a predator, right? These are the these are not mutually exclusive. These things overlap, okay? A few weeks prior. Sorry, just like in this situation, just because Katie, or no, just because George didn't intend to essay Katie doesn't mean Katie was an essayed. Katie can be essayed by just a definition and George could not have attended that, which is why I personally don't think we should be freaking out because we've changed definitions to assume like in some ways we have to ask ourselves if you essay someone is that what's is that what's bad or is it the fact that you intended to essay them because again intention to me is what matters you know what I mean jelly bean so again okay I just feel like we're not being very honest about the conversation because it's uncomfortable I don't know what metric she used here to determine the freshness date on her fucking body, but she turned 18 on her birthday January 2nd, and last year's VidCon was June 21st. <laughs> that's that's your six month in. You know, a couple weeks into being 18, if you still want to give yourself the freshness label, date, whatever. See, he would disagree with my label. I think you're freshly 18 until you're 19. And many of you would disagree with that. But see how we're all different? The world doesn't revolve around you. There is not an objective to this. Sure. A month you're pushing it. But six? <laughs> six? I was freshly 18. Also, there's this weird focus on George being this much older, bigger, and much more influential person to try to paint him out to be Harvey Weinstein or something. I was assaulted by a significantly old- Yeah, I think this was a mistake on Katie's part, and I do think this probably came from the influence of her friends, to paint George like a methodical, malicious predator. We have no evidence of that. We have no reason to believe that. Now, I do think men- Look at, okay, here's a question. Ooh, great question. Is Fresh, um, Walter, is he a predator? Are fuckboys predators? These are different categories. A Weinstein, a person who's in positions of power, Dan Schneider, these are different kinds of power dynamics that are obviously predatory and they know it. So those are different categories of people. Then there's the category of person who's like a fuck boy who's told like you need to lie to women and use women and convince them to sleep with you. And that's how you have Riz. That's what game is. So is Walter a predator or is he a liar and a fuck boy? Right. Is George a little autist who like didn't know better or is he a methodical thinker who's like planning this out? So that's what you have to think about. Now, I think you can be targeted. I think fuck boys can be predators or scammers to an extent like I think if you're willing to lie to a girl in order to get her into bed you are some variation of scammer same with women who are willing to lie to men to get them into bed there's but see I'm anti-lying but most of society isn't most of society lies in order to get a second date most of you are trained most of us are told lie on your first second third fourth date in order to get another date so what are we going to do about that you know, that's the question. 
Everyone makes stupid mistakes. Again, we live in this world where everyone's like, you're an adult. You should know better. Well, then why don't you know better? Why aren't you perfect? Why do you make mistakes? Why does everyone around you make mistakes? Why do your parents make mistakes? Why do politicians make mistakes? Why do, where did we get off thinking, oh, once you're, you're an adult, you'll know better. Okay, well, Spider-Man meme. Why don't you know better? Why don't you know better if you think you're so fucking smart? You don't know better. I guarantee you, you're going to have a situation happen in your life and someone's going to say, why didn't you know better? For the same reason Katie doesn't know better. For the same reason George doesn't know better. For the same reason your mom doesn't know better. So I think we're being so dishonest when we have these conversations. Adults don't know better until they do. And when they do, then you can hold them more accountable. See, Weinstein knows better. Lots of people knew better, right? It was planned. It was methodical, targeted, thought out. Now with Walter, it's a little more interesting because did Walter intend to be a predator or did he think he was being a man? And often, what really is the difference? It's a bit of a joke. It's a bit of a joke. Everybody relax. It's a bit of a joke. So when you're methodical, when you're planning out text messages, when you're gaslighting people, when you're telling people you love them and you're going to leave your spouse for them or be with them or marry them or, oh, you've met my mother or I've knocked you up. And then you claim, well, I was, I was just crazy. Things were crazy. Things were a mess. Oh my God, I was stressed. Oh, I didn't understand. He, okay, cool. So everybody else needs to know better except the person making the accusation. So again, should Katie, who's freshly 18, know better? Should George, who's isolated and was spent three years of in, in COVID, know better? Should they know better? Older and popular content creator. And he was eight years older than me and far more powerful. Like, yeah, sure. I guess he's got more subs than you. But I mean, the guy was 26 at the time and you were 18. Who cares? I don't know me. how. I think 26 and 18 is super inappropriate. I don't think it's against the law inappropriate, obviously, but I do think it is super inappropriate and I do judge you. I judge anyone who's who's got that age gap going on. If my brothers called me and said, hey, I'm 10 years, six years, 12 years older than this girl, I'd be like, what are you doing judging you? I'm judged. This is a bad idea. So you say, who cares? I think it's gross and I think it shows your maturity level. If you're 26, if you're 28, if you're 30 dating an 18 year old, Sir, do you also need your mother to burp you and tuck you into bed? Why are you dating a child? 18 is legally an adult, but to me, at 35, that's a child. So yes, I understand. I understand, but everyone's perception is different. Just imagine, again, your own siblings, your own friends bringing home somebody with that age gap. If you're into it, that's your culture. But lots of us, that's a huge red flag, bro. How this has become a relevant part in the first place in this situation that a 26 year old flirting with an 18 year old is a problem <laughs> like that anyone's supposed to care about that. I mean, come on. It come on. Why are we watching this video? Why would you guys spam me with this video? It's so silly. You know, 18 is not a child. 18 is arbitrary. You know, we made it up, guys. You know, 18 doesn't actually make you an adult. There's no there's only a line in the sand we put down. and We're like, that's an adult. You know, in Europe, the age of consent is much lower. Right. So again, adult is like a construct. We made it up to like signify a time in development. It's like the closest we could get to that makes sort of sense. Worst, like you, what you call the guy a little bit creepy and say, if that was my daughter, I wouldn't want her with a 26 year old. But she's trying. And yes, that's true. George did not know her age. He assumed she was over 21. So George did not know she was 18. I'm gonna use this to imply some kind of predator. Listen to this. She's talking as if 18's the new eight. Later that night when I left, I received in I mean, it kind of is though. That's what I'm saying. Like these guys are so young. They, re they for them, they were just 18. And that's why like, it's always a red flag when people in my life are willing to date people so young. I'm like, man, you're really stunted, bro. You are so stunted. Like I can just tell you're so stunted in order to find this attractive. Instagram DMs from him. And in my Instagram bio, in bold, was my age, 18, confirming he knew how old I was. And with this having more power thing, I think Destiny puts it pretty well, noting that there's power imbalances in nearly every relationship or hookup. But just because there's a power imbalance doesn't inherently make it predatory or abusive. It's only if the person who has the power abuses that power. Just because right. you're a big YouTuber doesn't right, mean she... people... Exactly, but from her perspective, she feels like that might have occurred, which I think is where she's wrong in. 
I don't think George intended to use that power for maliciousness. And that's where the big miscommunication is. And so now people are doing it to Katie. They're assuming maliciousness on her part that I don't think they can actually prove. I don't think they can prove she's being malicious. Because guys, if all these freaks on her side of the aisle are freaking out and they're like, it's a crime, then none of them are being malicious. They literally just think it's wrong. Do you get what I'm saying? They're not targeting you with like, intent to be cruel they literally think you're being you're wrong like you're a bad person you know what i'm saying work nine to five jobs are now beneath you and you can't hook up with them because it's inherently an abuse of power that's that's ridiculous the only time this would be a problem is if he said he'll give you a shout out if you have sex with him for example because yeah then he's abusing his power to try to get sex but that's not what george does at all i figured that's just how things were that that was the price I had to pay to be there. Are you are you serious? You felt like this was your price also, to this pay kid, for being- Also, this kid looks like he's 12, bro. Like, I would never think of him as a, an adult. Like, I would never even think to- Like, this this is a child. I don't know who we're watching, but this You're is right. what a child there. looks like. Which does it all. That's a child. That's just and he's abusing his power. Do you know what I mean? Like, this is a child. Like, I don't know how old this person is, but this is a child, right? Like, how old is this human? How old are they? They cannot be even in their 30s. Like- if they're in their 30s, they look like a child, which is good for you, I guess. But this is, I'm assuming, like a young person. I would never look at this human at a mall. I don't go to the mall. That's for teenagers. I would never look at this human at a restaurant and be like, oh, yeah, that's an adult. I would feel weird to me. I'm an old lady. You know what I mean? So, again, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to ostracize him. I'm just trying to say, to me, it would be weird if I, as a 35-year-old woman, went for this dude. I'd be like, you see how inappropriate that is? This is a baby. Maybe he's not a baby. He could be 40, but like he looked like a baby. You know what I mean? So again, okay, Katie, George, I wonder how many people can get through this without trying to read their minds because both of them seem authentic. George even said Katie feels authentic to him, but also this is a, she's, she's handling it very poorly, but how could she not? You know, they spent three years of their life, guys, not socializing during COVID. A lot of them are very stunted. A lot of these people are very stunted. You know what I mean? To try to get Even this guy who's saying like 26 and 18, who cares? Lots of people care about that age gap. My parents would care. My parents are very like not, f I'm not a fan of age gaps. If the younger person is younger, like my parents would be like, why are you dating someone? If you're 26, why are you dating someone who's 18? Why are you doing that? So people care about these things sex but that's not what george does at all i figured that's just how things were that that was the price i had to pay to be there are you are you serious you felt like this was your price to pay for being around him so yeah that's pretty bad that means she did the thing again she did the weinstein situation but again george is in weinstein and she's not one of those actresses but she did make the mistake of again willing to sell her soul for status super unethical i don't recommend doing it Lots of people are willing to do it. I don't think you should. That doesn't change the fact that George could have been a predator at the same time. What's really important is that this was two, I think, innocent people miscommunicating. And I think that's the problem. Like, I think that's the problem. Already, there's some questions raised just with her first allegation stream, especially given that all of this is just her own testimony. Not one screenshot or text was shown to let us know that she even ever interacted with this guy. But George then releases his response video, putting into question a lot more things about Katie's allegations. First, bringing up that Katie outright lied about George being the one who insisted on the drinking games, showing text that it was actually her and her friends who asked them to play. Another thing that she told- Yeah, I think that's like really shitty. Right? Like, no one's, I don't think anyone's, like, excited about Katie's decision to do this. Right? We're not excited about it. No one's excited about it. Obviously, George is, like, the victim in the situation. And Katie's the victim of her own upbringing and psychology. She's struggling. She's young. Um, I have faith that she'll, she'll be okay. I mean, most of the planet's shitty anyway, so I don't know why we're attacking a 19-year-old like any of you are better. But also, it's a different um, marketplace for accusations, going online suffer like all of this stuff is a different game like i don't think people are as consistent with their values as they think they are i just think it feels like they want to be i feel sorry for katie i mean i feel devastated for katie i don't think we disagree on that i mean i feel devastated for her right like this is really difficult i just don't think she was a victim of intentional essay if anything she was a victim of unintentional essay which i think 
is very common in other cultures. And I think it's really wrong to tell other cultures you can't have a place with nonverbal consent. But if you want to be extra safe, you'll always use verbal consent. But even verbal consent isn't guaranteed because like, you know, people, you have to be with, it's not about verbal consent or nonverbal consent. It's about actually recognizing you're with a person you can trust and you're both clearly communicating. How about that? It's not even about the kind of consent. You know what I mean? Sage says, I disagree that it's not essay. Okay, that's fair. Yeah, that's a fair opinion to have. I know lots of people who would agree with you on that. I mean, by definition, for a lot of college campuses, it's essay. For a lot of, um, in a lot of situations, it is essay. But for me, I just, I can't do that without the intentionality. You know, Sage says, I don't think it was intentional, but I do think it's essay. Yeah, I could see that. I could, by definition, I think it is objectively, well, subjectively, objectively essay uh, in a certain bubble. But for me, I'm not going to count it unless it's intentional. I think that's really important. Hades, you said, I don't think it was essay because it was a very slow progression of flirting to cuddling. She wasn't flirting. He read it as flirting. Keep in mind, this is a bunch of autistic people who don't know what's going on, right? To cuddling, to him making more of a move over the course of hours and positive responses from Katie. The dilemma is that it was a miscommunication, guys. It's not a fact that you got positive communication from Katie. It was a misreading of the situation in which he thought she was positively reinforcing him to make a move. That's the point. The point is it was a, it was hours long, having a good time, laughing, cuddling on a couch. And she was, she did cuddle with him, but like in a lot of bubbles, cuddling doesn't matter. So we have a bunch of neurodivergent kids who are all pretty sure they have autism and they probably all do. Okay, totally miscommunicating every second, right? I'm going to be real with you. That's just how shit happens. Okay, that's how shit happens. You know what I mean? And that's why you have to have the conversation with people like, do we all understand what's happening? Do we all agree like what's going on? You know, David said, I agree. Essay is culturally and even subjectively defined. I have experiences being touched inappropriately without consent at parties, but I never considered essay because of the context. For sure. Oh my God. Women touch men all the time. Men touch women. Old ladies touch me in the store all the time. People touch me all the time. Uh, you know, they, they're not, it's, it's so frustrating because they don't even think about it. And that's the problem. We're not thinking about each other. We're not thinking about that other person. We're thinking about the situation. We're thinking about Riz. We're thinking about looking cool. We're never thinking about that. If you thought about that person for a fucking second, you would think, hold on, I should really check. Now, you can also misread situations. You know how many situations I've misread and I'm like, I am so embarrassed. I literally thought that was the move. I literally thought we were on the same page. What do you mean? We Like we're not on the same page? It's a huge part of being a person, which is why it's so important to know who is a predator and who is the person who's miscommunicating? Because I'm going to tell you this right now. Like, let's say one in 10 people are predators. That's a lot of people. That's a lot of people. But that means the majority of people around us are just stupid. They're just stupid. They're making mistakes. And so again, we have to decide how do we make room for those people to make mistakes? And also, you don't have to do the heavy lifting. You don't have to be people's moms, guys. You don't have to take care of George. You don't have to take care of Katie. None of us are responsible for these two people's feelings. You're only getting worked up about it, not you, my audience. The world's getting worked up about it because they feel like it represents something else or maybe something that's gonna happen to them. But I hate to tell you this. I have warned, person after, you know how many of my male friends I have warned? I was like, don't date an 18-year-old. You're for, you're 30 years old. Don't date an 18-year-old. Like, no, she she and I vibe. We're, we're totally alike. We play the same video games. You can warn people. I'll tell women, don't date him. He's in his 50s. What are you doing? Don't be with that person. They're so much older than you. Ha date somebody your age. No, he really gets me, bro. He's like so mature for his age. At the end of the day, you can tell people. They still have to make a decision about how they want to interact. So Katie's responsible for not standing up for herself. George is responsible for not getting verbal consent. They are all responsible for not drinking with people they already knew. And society is responsible for not training our kids better. And the world is responsible for even giving birth to us in the first place. Everyone is responsible and no one is. The world is a reflection of us as a whole. I'm stumbling and everything. No one drank. I'm stumbling and everything. Then George brought up that when he touched under Katie's shirt around her... Hold on. Great question. Brian Brennan says, at what point is miscommunicating slander, though? I think slander has to also be intentional. I don't think sharing your story 
is the same. I think you can have um, like a sickness. Like I think my stalker is really, really sick because I think all stalkers are sick. I think they're inherently sick people who slander and stalk and like twist things about people because they feel like they can't get close enough to that person. And I think those people are incredibly ill. And I think it's clear we should categorize them as sick people that are beyond like reason, right? Lots of people are sick and still within reason. But I think you can say that these people are sick. I think Katie is suffering from uh, something that is impacting her ability to see things outside of her own feelings. And I think that does that's really sad. I think that's just so hard. I think that must be such a burden, you know, and I definitely wouldn't wish that upon anybody. And I just don't imagine that Katie is purposely slandering George, though she could be, because I can't read her mind. And the same way, guys, I'm so terrified I'm defending another shitty man. What if George is secretly shitty and he's convinced all of us he's not? Now, I don't think that. And I still don't think Katie is necessarily malicious because there's just not enough evidence for me to write them off as intentional predators. But I cannot write George off as an intentional predator and I can't write Katie off as one. It feels really inconsistent in terms of how I know them as tropes, but I could be wrong because I can't read either of their minds. Way stomach area that it wasn't out of nowhere at all. And Katie left out and omitted the fact that they were already cuddling with each other for over an hour at this point. And what's worse is the internet does it tenfold. The internet is so mad for Katie reading George's mind and attributing malicious intent to him, and yet you will do it to her. Because you think you have enough evidence. Don't you think her bubble also thinks they have enough evidence? laughing and giving no indication that she was uncomfortable at all. As I mentioned before, we had previously been cuddling on this couch for around an hour. But I In my bubble, cuddling is neutral. If you look up the definition of cuddling on Google, it comes up, he cuddled the baby. Because that's what it comes up for my Google. It's about children and parents. Cuddling is neutral. That he did it even in my silence. <laughs> Devil says it's harder to sympathize with her though, at least for me, because of the damage his career took and the thousands of people demanding for him to be beaten. I'm sorry, did you all miss the death threats Katie got? Did you all miss the messages she got? Did you all miss how hateful these boys are? The internet is a cesspool of adult losers. And anyone who sent Katie a hate message is just as bad as people who send George a hate message. And if you don't think so, you need to go to therapy, see a priest, or go get your brain checked. I don't know why you think Katie didn't receive any fucking death threats or any kind of hateful messages. You're fucking insane. Like, this is such a weird idea that you don't think horrible things happen to both of them. Like, obviously, Katie was getting an insane amount of backlash. Like an insane amount of backlash. Big content creators covered her and went after her. She's getting whole video essays made about her. Like no offense to the anti-George people. They were no way as loud of a voice as the anti-Katie people. So again, like, I don't, I don't know how to tell you guys this. No matter what, everyone's going to get shit on because the internet's accessible of human beings. My heart goes out to George. George, call me. Okay, we'll talk about it. But like also, they're young. They're stupid. They're making mistakes. And genuinely, like all of this is because of cultural expectations of bubbles. You expect something of someone, they didn't do it. It's like world shattering. It's like, what? You're misunderstanding each other. I don't write mean messages on people's videos. And the fact that I know like a lot of people do, I'm looking at you. In Katie's world, like I don't think Katie knew it was going to be this bad, the backlash. I think she thought people were going to understand where she's coming from. But no one is. Every video essay we watch about this, nobody cares where Katie is coming from. Zero empathy. She's, she's a malicious snake, Brittany. Okay, but like maybe she's like 19 and traumatized. But like it's not to justify her actions. I'm just explaining why they happened. But again, when we're having these conversations, you have to understand that I would love for people just to be like, why? Did she do this? To any guy who dates this girl after this, you deserve everything coming towards you. This is every sign in the universe you're gonna get telling you to stay the fuck away from this woman. My story is about power and age and consent. No, your story is about you being flirty with a guy one night. We don't really know that. See how he's putting that on her? What does flirty mean? Chronically online people are, are like arguing about social expectation to chronically online people. And regretting oh. it later on. But unlike most normal people that this happens to where they just move on with their life, you had to masquerade and pretend to be a victim to try to destroy this guy's life and career over your regrets. After George's- Yeah, that's assuming she has like a regret. We don't. We just don't know this information. 
response video though, Katie then fired back on Twitter with the most unhinged shit yet. At first, I think her strategy was trying to go into this situation as the vulnerable, small, little, weak, crying girl to get everyone's sympathy, but that's all completely gone now. She's mad, and she wants blood. I mean, this response reads like a fucking ex-wife in divorce court. For now, this is what I have to say. He admitted to touching me, that I was drunk, that I verbally didn't consent, in my mind, the conversation is over. Yeah, this is what I meant. This first sentence is complete. <laughs> my Discord's like, I can't with this bubble. I'm gonna go study. Wow, this video made my 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 Discord go study. That's how cringe it is. You know what I mean? Or maybe it's this. Oh uh, yeah, this bubble's insane. You know, I think um I think ultimately um the people Katie surround her surrounds herself with are probably not the greatest. <clears throat> but also, we don't know. You know, I don't think the internet knows who told Katie to post the letter. We're assuming it's her friends, right? So are, do we even know that? Do you guys know who recommended for Katie to post her letter and come out with her, her story? Because we're making a very big assumption that it was her friends, right? Is that kind of a big assumption? Do you guys know that for a fact? And I think even starting there is so important because I think everyone made that assumption but what, does the internet know that? Did anyone confirm it? Did anyone say that? Did she say it? Did she say who encouraged her to put out the story? I feel like everyone's forgetting how easy it is to make assumptions so like far in advance. Even I did that. I was like, maybe it was her friends. We don't know that. And I think that adds another layer to the story. What if it was like a grown ass adult who recommended it? What if it was like somebody really like in a position of authority? What if it was like, I don't know, somebody from YouTube or somebody in her life that was like, this would be reasonable to do. What if it was somebody who was internet inept we just don't know so making that assumption is, is a part of the issue right is we don't know who encouraged her to express this and you guys keep saying she's an adult she should know better well then george is an adult and he should know better everyone should know better we should all know better but we don't because we're, we're coming against cultural differences i don't think katie's unjustified in releasing the video really I really disagree with that i think it was very inappropriate for her to come out with the story before she talked to george I think she should have talked to George about it. Look, I am deeply, this is my bias. I am deeply terrified of falsely, accu of falsely accusing anybody. I'm terrified about lying about people. I do not lie about people. I don't like it when people lie about me. I don't want to lie about anybody. So I think I would have so much, I, until I talk to George, I would assume that I don't have the whole story. So I feel like if I was Katie, and I'm older now, I'm 35, so to be fair, Katie's 19, I would have talked to that person and be like, just to confirm, you know, because it could have been, like, I know it could have been a miscommunication, but I think it, it's bad, you know what I mean? Sage says, I don't see it as a cope, but I do, but I don't think it's bad for her releasing it. I think it was bad for her mental health. I think it was worse for Katie in the long run, and it was certainly worse for George. So I think releasing the letter or the story was way worse for George and horrible for Katie's mental health. I just think, I just think it was really bad for her to post the, the post the thing. It is a lie. You said it's not a lie. No, no, no. She definitely lied because she assumed malicious intent on his part. Oh, well, it's not a lie. Mm, okay. Assumptions are oh, lie adjacent. She misconstrued and assumed something just like this guy's assuming of her so i i think there's that where hmm because she's assuming malicious intent on his part mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah see that's the problem is like is like we don't we couldn't have read george's mind we didn't know what his intent was i think it really should have been handled in private though sage says from her perspective she's telling the truth yes so from that perspective i agree with you from her mind it made sense to release the video but i think in hindsight obviously even though even but even still guys even still even from her her position thinking it's a it's a real thing that she got everything correct that she read the situation perfectly I really think it was worse for her to release it, especially since she didn't name George in the first accusation video. It wasn't about victims because she wasn't warning people against him. She was doing it for her sake and I don't think it helped her. I'm not convinced. I'm not convinced it helped her, but I don't know. Headline farming. She's completely ignoring the context that cuddling with a guy and even spooning for over an hour gives him the nonverbal green light to go and make the advancement of touching your tummy or like around your waist area under your shirt. And also that you weren't the only one drunk. One was drunk at this place too. And I just 
point, I was pretty drunk, and so was basically everyone in this room. No one tried to get you drunk and vulnerable to prey on you. If anything, like, your friends are more to blame because they're the ones who suggested drinking the alcohol and playing the drinking games. But this is either her purposely playing dumb as a tactic or just genuinely this brain rotted by Twitter that she thinks that every time a guy is to make an advancement on a girl that they have to explicitly ask verbal consent to touch, to kiss, to do anything, to have a hug. This isn't real life. This is that is real life. That is a thing. And lots of cultures practice it. And I think you are chronically online if you think that's not the case. Like you're chronically in your bubble if you think that's not happening. It is not common in on the planet. Like, you know, there's a globe. You know, we live on a planet. There's like 8 billion people and plenty of people ask for consent. Now, not all people ask for consent. Many cultures don't ask for consent in that same way, right? So again, we have to be aware of the cultural difference. So he's saying that's not real life. This is online internet. It's, it's real life in a lot of places, not in the majority of places. Asking verbal consent is a newer phenomenon and I'm here for it. I believe in it. But also, okay, also, I think this narrative of black and white thinking of like, this isn't how the world is. Some of the world is like that. You don't have to practice it that way. She's not wrong for wanting verbal consent. I don't think she was going through a medical free situation because she thought it through. She literally said, this is what I thought I had to do to fit into the group. Nobody projected that onto her. She wasn't having a freeze fight flight reaction, guys. I don't think Katie was having a freeze reaction. I know people keep bringing that up. But from Katie's own storytelling, she wasn't having a freeze reaction. She was socializing and laughing and cuddling and going back and forth between grabbing more alcohol and sitting on the couch and telling her friend goodbye and sitting on the couch. Like she, she wasn't having a freeze reaction. She made a calculated decision that she thought she had to make because she misunderstood the situation. She thought in order to be accepted by these people, I had to go along with it. That is her misunderstanding the situation which is why a part of me knows it's got to be a social um, uh, uh, deficit of some kind because either from COVID or being at home because of COVID or something because she thought it through. So she wasn't having that freeze reaction that some of us have in really scary situations. She wasn't having that. She was thinking about it. She just misunderstood the situation. If you know the whole story, if you've watched all the videos I've done on it, there's a lot of information. This is not it. He's not even giving a lot of the information. There's so much more. How Katie just flat out lied about a message from one of the- I don't know why Katie took down the streams about George. Well, probably because it was too much, guys. She was getting severely bullied. Like, people were sending her death threats. Of course she took the video. I'm glad she took the videos down. I recommend she does take the videos down and she doesn't talk about this and she comes back in like a year or two when she's better and she can move on from it. I do think she should privately talk to George and they should work it out. And I do think this is a miscommunication and I think the world needs to move on from it because I don't think either of these people maliciously saw each other out to like tear each other down. I don't know though, because what are we gonna do, right? the guys who was there in the hotel with them. She claimed they said, I'm currently watching George, 26, cuddle with Katie to make George look worse and even more creepy that his own even friend pointed it out how uncomfortable he was. That wasn't me. I don't know where they got that from. And then after George confirmed it wasn't this guy, he then asked Dream if he could get into contact with Katie to ask what was going on and what happened here. <laughs> who was the person who sent this message or did she just completely fake it? I do acknowledge and own up to the fact I completely was wrong about that. But again, I'm saying, even though it wasn't from his friend, it was yet another person in the hotel room that acknowledged the weirdness. Yes, it wasn't from that guy in the hotel room. It was from the girl in the hotel room. Like, I still think the situation, the screenshot, it's not a fake screenshot as well. It's a real screenshot. It keeps going though. This whole uh, we cuddled section of her response is absolute gold. Katie goes from saying that she was so scared around George that she couldn't even move or breathe to now saying that, well, you know, <laughs> yeah, I did cuddle with him, but you know, that's just me when I'm being drunk. A lot of the cuddling he may have felt was personal was just me being drunk. <laughs> I didn't. Yeah, that literally makes so much sense. I love how he can't get that. I love that so much. I love that he can't get that. That's what I mean. I love how inexperienced people are i really gotta write a book about all my experiences because bro the world does not revolve around you and your culture the world is diverse and strange 
And it's really hard to know a predator from a person making a mistake. It's really difficult because you're assuming people know better. And people don't. People are so fucking dumb. Yourself included. We're so dumb. And so we think we know better. Ask that to... Walter came inside of a woman who didn't have birth control. And he's like, you got pregnant? How'd you get pregnant? I didn't even... How'd you get pregnant? I didn't even think you could get pregnant. What are we talking about? Speak or move. I remember being afraid to even breathe. Katie, when she's too scared to breathe, see how he shows a specific vibe. We don't know that this was the vibe. This is the, see how he's inserting the vibe? Because in his head, he has an image. We do this a lot here. I say, okay, stop. What image do you guys have in your head when I say this? Because we all project our own understanding of words into our own heads and go, this is what we imagine when we see this. I think you can have an ideal world where you get verbal consent and everything's great and everyone's communicating, but you also got to be that person. So they, everyone, everyone's kind of fucking up here. But look at this, look at this picture he's using. This is the image he has in her head. I don't have this image at all. When they said cuddling on the couch, I imagined side by side in order for her to turn towards ghosty. So there's like, they couldn't have been sitting like this necessarily because she, it didn't make sense, you know? I remember being afraid to even breathe. After being caught lying, this girl has completely backtracked her entire initial allegation. He took it a step further in front of everyone, all because he assumed things and assumed he had the right. The gall of a man to assume, after spooning with a girl for over an hour, that he could reach in for a tummy touch. Lock him up, throw away the- It was a boob touch, but we don't know. Um, yeah, that wouldn't, it depends on the friend. So like, it depends on the situation. Like I said, I just know that that's not appropriate in all situations. It's okay that George made a mistake. That's the problem is they keep saying George did everything all right. George is also allowed to be held accountable for making a mistake. That's based off culture. He assumed Katie's culture and that was the mistake he made. You know what I mean? Like George assumed and that was his mistake. The mistake is always assuming. It makes it an ass out of you and me, guys. Assuming is the mistake. Someone's saying like, this is normal. This is great. Cool. Child marriage is also normal in parts of the world. It doesn't matter if it's normal. The point is, if you want to do better and you want to communicate better, you got to change what's normal. But also, both things can be true. George made a mistake. He assumed Katie was, the cuddle was going to translate to something sexual. Katie made the mistake that the cuddling wouldn't transfer to something sexual. You're all making the mistake that maybe it was more sexual. I'm making the mistake that it was much more platonic. We don't know, because we're assuming. Katie then says that she actually did get up, but to get more alcohol after getting sexually assaulted. And then after getting more alcohol, sitting right back down next to George, crawling back into his arms to continue getting sexually assaulted, I guess. Yeah, that part sucks. That's the part of the miscommunication, right? I don't think people, I hate to tell you this, and I know this is really hard for people to hear, and I don't think Katie was maliciously targeted by a predator. I don't think George meant to essay her. So this is kind of a caveat. People will stay in abusive relationships. They will defend their abusers. They will stay in the house of their rapist. They will literally to this day talk about how it did not impact them, that they still love them, that they're still good people. I don't know how to tell you this, but this dream we have that, oh, if this person assaulted you, you would leave and run away. Yes, some people would. Lots of humans stay. It's how the whole world was built. Have you seen Attack on Titan? What does Amir do? She stays. It's insane. That pissed me off. I would love to have seen her gotten the Titan power and left. I would love to have seen her fight the king and leave. But she stayed because abuse victims often stay. I hate that. I hate that. But it's true, which is why we have to be aware of the situation we put people in but we're not trained to consider the position we're putting people in because we're, quote, it's doing, it's normal. Yes, I agree with you. Contextually, it could be, or it could be bad. For some people, this would have been just a fun night. I've had so many fucking drunk nights like this. I've had so many fun, exciting, wonderful parties with friends, boob touching, dry humping, sleeping together, non-sexual, sexual, non-sexual, non sexual, sexual, all of it, all of it. Never had a problem with essay up until I was like 22 and I went to a specific party. 
Never had a problem with any of those instances. Never had a problem with hanging out with really famous people. Never had a problem with age gap relationships. Never had a problem. I mean, I had problems, but not like uh, bad problems, you know, like normal toxic problems, but not like essay problem. This is not my story. These are different people's stories with different, different reactions and assumptions and all of it. I can't say, well, that's, that's this, this is how it happened for me. So this is how it's happening for Katie. And same thing. Don't take your trauma and project it onto Katie because like Katie's not you. How did Katie feel about it? How did George feel about it? I don't think Katie intended to lie about him. So I just don't think it matters. It only matters to the people being impacted. And that's Katie and George. And if they decide this doesn't matter and they're going to move on for it from it, the internet needs to move on. But the internet won't because it's not about Katie and George. They're going to project themselves onto the situation and they're going to bully both of these people into not fixing the situation because it feels better for their egos. The right situation, the right ending is for George and Katie to talk this through and move on from it because neither of them intended to hurt each other. Initially, maybe now they feel vindictive, but initially they never intended to hurt each other. It just ended up hurting so much more than needed. Okay, so you chose to keep getting sexually assaulted for the sake of his ego. <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> yeah. I hate to say it, like, I, I understand what he's trying to say, but that is actually really common. Yeah. That is actually what happens. That's, that's, yeah. But I also understand the idea of, like, Katie didn't have the, the, like, she didn't even, I don't know how aware, I don't know her mental health, guys. I don't know how aware she was that she had any chance to move out of that situation. Like, I don't know that, but she's definitely severely wrong, right? Like she, Katie is wrong about assuming anything malicious out of anyone, but I think that's also an indication of some sort of mental something, you know? Uh, not impressed as this lyrics guy is 20, by the way. Okay, so he's a baby. He doesn't know. Like, he doesn't know things. It's okay. If he watches my video, maybe he'll learn a lot, but yeah. Dude, you should you should have led with that. Come on, uh, come on. Okay, now I get it. Thank you. I'm in disbelief. Even one. Uh, F word says I'm glad I found a female talking about this. Okay, a fe can I tell you something? I'm so sick of these fucking men talking about this subject matter like they have any fucking clue. And I'm also a a grape survivor, so I feel like I have a pretty good insight into getting in dealing with things. So I'm sitting here like, who are these men who are all commenting, bro? And even some of the women that I'm sorry are not like again. No one is thinking about Katie which I understand, so I will do it. Everyone is thinking about George, but not even George, because you're not listening to George. And I know, you know what pisses me off the most is how many content creators have reviewed this and not even reviewed as many logs as we've reviewed, and there's still stuff I'm missing, but like literally, I will watch them do a live stream and they're like, oh, I haven't watched any of these videos on my own. I'm like, oh. so they don't even know what George has said. They're just assuming, they're like fighting for George on his behalf when they don't even listen to what he says. Oh, I'm so annoyed person bought this story let alone the vast majority i didn't want to embarrass him or myself i know it's a dumb thought why infantilize lyrics because he's a baby he's a kid 20 that's a baby he's a baby boy he's a baby he can't even legally drink alcohol he's a baby boy can't rent a car can't do shit he wants can't run for president He's a baby boy. Thought process, I acknowledge it. No, it's not that it's a dumb thought process. It's that you are completely full of shit and are lying. You were clearly into him that night, which is why you were giving him signs. Oh, oh, oh. You were clearly into him that night, which is why you're, man, you. Ma'am, I know you're 20, but that is an incredibly inappropriate assumption. You are making a lot of assumptions, sis. See this? See this? So human. I can't even, he's 20. He's like a baby. I'm not even going to hold it against him. He a baby, you know? Brooke says I'm 21. Does that make me a baby? Yes, Habibi, you're a baby. I am literally, what, 14 years older than you. 14 years. Yes, you're a baby. When Dr. Kirkonda talks about how people in their 30s are babies to him, I'm like, ah, that's me. Dr. Kirkonda's like, I'm in my 50s. People in their 30s are so young. I was like, that's me. Yes. I'm a baby to somebody in their 50s and 60s, and you're a baby to somebody in their 30s. That's how it works. Okay? That's how it works. But look, look at this baby. Look at this 20 year old baby who's making so many assumptions right now. To keep making advancements on you because you enjoyed the night. You enjoyed yourself. That's why you even stayed afterwards to keep cuddling and spooning with George and having a good time after your own friends left. You're That's true. She shouldn't have done that. She shouldn't have done that. But I think Katie's uh, mental health is impaired. I don't think she knows. 
I think she's socially stunted for sure, you know? Her best friend left because they were throwing up and you were so into George that you didn't go help out your best friend who's drunk and throwing up because you were so- Yeah, no one, no one helped out for anyone. Desperate to get back in George's arms. You That's not- Oh, he's being kind of a dick. Oh, oh, this is gross. Oh, no, no. Oh, this is gross. Oh, this is bad YouTubing. This is bad. This is, this is very, mm, see, I want to say malicious, but he's not intending it to be malicious. Mm, this is bad YouTubing, but he's young. He's 20. He's a baby. Mm, ooh, this is bad YouTubing. He's, he's, see how he's maliciously saying, like he's putting it on her that she's like a harlot, that she's a slut. Mm, that's not accurate. That's wrong. That's not true. Katie's not. Katie's not that girl. That's the wrong categorization for Katie. Oh. Nope. Goth, I disagree. All of her actions point towards her wanting to hook up with George. Not at all. Wrong. You guys are all fucking incels who have never fucked a woman. Absolutely not. Wrong. 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 Zero. Maybe the women in your bubble. That is not a universal take. And you all need to fucking stop that shit. Okay, you need to you need to figure it out because you trying to read a room and guess her is wrong. I wrong. That is not the assumption. All the text messages, all of the tweets, all of the things. Okay, could have been, could have not been, probably not. Ooh, this is a bad section. You weren't this scared girl who couldn't move or breathe. You moved very fine to get more alcohol and back into his arms while spooning with the guy. And you, you could breathe fine. You, you were able to breathe. But then the night came to a close. You woke up. You spoke to some of your friends and then regretted it afterwards. And now we're going on this campaign to try to destroy this guy's life over just you regretting the night. That See, we just don't know that. We do not know that. You know what I mean? No, goth. I'm going to block all of you. She's a She might not be a hoe, but she's acting like one. If you think that's hoe behavior, you guys are fucking virgins, bro. That does not, that's not even close. You think what Katie described in that night was hoe behavior? You have never met a hoe. What? That is crazy. That is a crazy assessment of a hoe. Not even close, bro. Not even fucking close. Her her categorization is literally virginal, non-slutty girl. She's not even slightly slutty. That's not even, like, it's not even close. Look, you can hold Katie accountable. Not you, not that you should. But Katie can, could be held accountable. Like, you don't even know what hoe behavior is, bro. That's crazy. You clearly, we're consensually and giving him signs to make advancements on you. Oh my God, can George read minds now? Hey, I'm reading your mind. I think you want me, bro. Bro, I feel like he made this video to slide into my DMs. I can feel it. It sounds crazy, bro. You're being crazy. You're just, you're assuming so much. I know this sounds forward, but that's all this is. But my absolute- the Wow, the way people read minds, bro. Favorite part of both Katie's stream and written response on Twitter is her taking up the role of the Martin Luther King Jr. of sexual assault victims, giving her commentary on the- Oh, people, Beza says, do they think she's lying about being asexual? People definitely believe that, but they also don't know what it is. Like, asexual people can have sex. So they, they don't know what it is, first of all. People don't believe it, second of all. Also, I don't know if she is asexual, objectively. I think she might be. She might be demi. She's probably demi. A lot of people are demi and they think they're asexual, which asexual and demi have some overlap. You know what I mean? I'm just trying to get you guys to stop assuming. Stop assuming he's a predator. Stop assuming she's innocent or, or, or malicious. Stop assuming they're bad people. They're probably not bad people. They're probably naively using the information they have to make really like messy decisions current state of society that we live in. These situations always end in victim blame. If I didn't do this, she shouldn't have worn that. She shouldn't have been drinking. She was asking for it. We are embedded into a society to cover for assault. It's what we are built on. I want this situation to circle back to the original point, to make aware the reality that girl- Yeah, Katie's speech was cringe, bro. She's 19. I don't know what you wanted from her. Her speech was super cringe. She's literally 19. I don't know what you thought it was going to be face in this community that like have you seen trump's trump's speeches he's the president cringe bro cringe
Many people are forced into silence. I just don't want victims to feel like they have to prove themselves to people to be believed, that they are only valid if they had proof. That's true too. You obviously don't want proof, but if you're going to make accusations, that's what's difficult is like you kind of have to have evidence for that or you can speak your piece, but people might not believe you. But to be fair, even if you had proof, they won't believe you. So you're kind of like fucked. Again, because George didn't intend for it, I think it changes things. And I think that really does play a role. But also, I think there's a line between intending and then making mistake after mistake. Like, George was sorry for what he did. He did apologize to her. Like, he was very sorry for how he treated her because he didn't realize she didn't want it. So I think that's really good of George to apologize. Like, what a gentleman. And then it's her job to go, okay, okay, he's really sorry. I think he's being genuine, if he is being genuine. And then to say, wow, look how much we miscommunicated. This should be a lesson to all of us that miscommunication happens, that people are going to miscommunicate, that people are going to run into these situations, that you and me and I and everybody, our kids, our, our friends will run into situations like this. But assuming people are innocent is also assuming people are malicious. It's also assuming people aren't liars. Like some of y'all best friends be lying, bro. I believe you. Katie believes you. This nation will rise up, live out the true meaning of its creed. We hold these truths to be so. Wait, Discord said this guy is malicious, but it is known. Is this guy like, is he, is content known for being malicious? Wait. Has he made other videos? I don't know who this is. People were just spamming this video in my chat saying, watch this. F word with the super chat says, I dislike criticism being called victim blaming. Yeah, I mean, me too, obviously. So obviously, um, I don't know. Obviously, like uh, criticism and victim blaming are two different things. You have to know which one you're doing. Um, go check out this channel and see the videos I've posted on the on the situation as a whole. This is like my fourth video. So this is my aftermath. I'm just trying to keep up with it. I'm going to skip the Katie's Twitter response because this guy is way too biased and annoying and he's not factual, but he's a baby. So I'll give him a chance to grow. Let's go to the, it, this is the part I wanted to watch, the reactions part. Okay. Despite all these things though, the provable lies, the contradictions, I mean, even her own friend coming out and giving a different story from what hers was. Yeah, but everybody had a different story from that night. George, Dream, her, everyone had a different story from that night, which is normal in a drunk night. But the public response from the majority of fans was this. I don't want him to be deplatformed. I want to see footage of him being attacked. 11,000 likes. Electric chair. 8,000 likes. Abusers will lie. Men with power who target young women lie so that they can remain in power and keep wielding their power against young women. Remember that when you watch this. He is going to do everything he can to stay in power. Dude, did I click onto the Harvey Weinstein documentary? What the fuck is happening? They even added VidCon to get him kicked off on the roster this year, and it worked. But it wasn't just fans saying this. Even the people closest to him and multiple other creators in the community all completely threw George under the bus. What the living fuck are you thinking in that moment? Oh, what can I get away with? You gotta be out of your fucking living mind, drunk or not. They're so young, they're so young, and you're so fucking old. What are you doing? They're kids, they're teenagers. I think that if you have been caught clearly irresponsible with this position of power over teenagers, I don't think we should allow a second opportunity when we're dealing with teenagers and children. I can't. I can't, bro. That is disgusting to say. Many victims are told, you were sexually assaulted, you just changed your mind. You just regretted it. Yeah, I think a lot of people's traumas are playing into this because these are real phenomenons. Rape victims are disbelieved. Uh, people are punished for having triggers. People are doubted. People want evidence. People think you're lying. These are all true things. I do think people who have been assaulted probably latched on to Katie's experience and felt like she was expressing something really authentic, which I think you can say psychologically it was. Again, your feelings are valid. It doesn't mean your actions are like reasonable. And so I don't think Katie's actions were reasonable in expressing this story because I don't think George maliciously intended to assault her. But I think regardless of how you feel, culturally speaking, it could be both things could be true. And so I think we need to talk about that, right? Neither of them verbally communicated. Both of them were relying on physical ver uh, communication. Both of them misunderstood. Both of them had an expectation of the other and both of them got it wrong. Both of them are drunk. I mean, Jesus Christ. Both of them were a mess. It just feels like a recipe for disaster. And it makes sense to me that there was a miscommunication. And well, everything that kind of makes sense to me. 
So with that said, I do think that victims of assault are latching way too much onto Katie and projecting themselves onto her. And I think that's a mistake. And I do think that uh, people are defending George way too um, selfishly and they're not listening to what he's saying because they're acting way too vindictive themselves. Like this content creator here, this child here, this baby, what is he, 20? This child here, he keeps saying things about Katie that's just like he doesn't know and he's assigning a lot of intentionality to her that just – we don't know those things. And so again, assuming George is malicious is like assuming Katie's malicious. And I think everyone's wrong on that. I don't think Katie or George are being malicious, like with intention to harm, knowing they are wrong. Do you understand what I'm saying? I don't think Katie or George know they're wrong and are doing it anyways. I think they, they both thought they were doing the right thing, which is why the head, like the road to hell is paved in good intentions, right? And that's not true. Just because they're 18, you think they're the same as a consenting adult who's 30, nearly 30. I literally cannot. It's just so. Sage says, I think according to your bubble, you don't consider it essay if it's not malicious intent, right? Right. I don't consider it essay unless two things are happening. You are. So there's two things that have to happen for me to consider it some variation of a sexual assault. One, you have to know it is in your head and you're like, I know she doesn't want this or he doesn't want this, but I'm going to do it anyways. One. Or two, you know that if you bring it, you brought it up to society, that society will hold you accountable for taking advantage of somebody. So like if you're an adult who has like um, an issue with PDF file and you think you're in love with a child and you think you're giving this love to a child and you think it's authentic and real, it doesn't change the fact that you targeted a child. And so I think like an adult can convince themselves they're doing something that's right but it doesn't matter like in that situation, regardless of how you feel about it, I think it's wrong. So there's that nuance there. I think adult to adult, unless you are targeting somebody for malicious intent, it's not essay. But I do think, I do think that if you're involving a child in it, then it's always malicious, whether you intend to or not. I think if you drug someone's drink without their consent, there's almost no way that's not malicious, even if you don't intend it to be. I think there's some nuances here. I also want to say I'm happy to jump into a bubble that considers it sexual assault, but also consider sexual assault not that bad. So remember, I come from a bubble where sexual assault is really, really bad. So it has to be intentional because it's bad because it's intentional. It's not bad because it happened. It's bad because it's intentional. So if you want to say that sexual assault is unintentional and therefore not as bad, then I'm happy calling it sexual assault as long as now we have a different standard for holding people accountable, whether they intended it or not, just like we do in court. We do give people manslaughter versus murder, right? We do give people an understanding of their intent. Can it be essay in your bubble if both parties were super drunk or inebriated asking out of genuine curiosity? Um, I think if both people are drunk, it kind of cancels it out. But I also think in some situations, drunk people have a different relationship with alcohol. So some people who are drunk have a better relationship with alcohol and can still assault people when drunk. Like if you hit somebody or get into a fight with somebody, I'm happy to be lenient in how that occurred because of the alcohol, including but not limited to psychosis stabbings or drunk driving. Like I'm happy to be lenient on people who are intoxicated, but it depends on how they got there. What's the context? Is there for, is this their first offense? There's so many things that have to be taken into consideration, right? Dream, who's his closest friend for some reason did an impromptu Twitter space completely disavowing George. I think that uh, he did something fucked up. I think that what happened Amaris says, I don't agree with the statement that drunk people can't consent. If you drive drunk, you deal with the consequences. There's no I was drunk defense. There should be. I think we should consider how intoxication leads to a different relationship. You know what I mean? What happened was fucked up. I think that it was terrible. And I think that I feel terrible for any involvement that I had. And I feel terrible for... Oh, I. this is the conversation I listened to. Katie. Um, I think that Katie deserves all the support that... You See, can, George and Dream both said, be nice to Katie. Give her. It is a terrible situation. It is a terrible thing. The pain that she feels. He sounds like a fucking second grader who got in trouble in class. What is this? It is. That's what it is. a terrible thing. Pain is not good. Oh, uh, gold star. Interesting. So the 20 year old is not listening to any of the people involved and has decided he knows better than anyone that was involved. What an asshat. What a, what a child, bro. Ugh, people are so young. 
So the guy who wasn't involved is listening to three people who are directly involved in some capacity and is going, no, I know better than everybody involved. Don't you love humans, bro? You weren't even there, bro. Like, you can give your opinion and your advice. I'm doing it right now. But obviously, you're not listening to them. Listen to their what they're saying so you can come to the best outcome, the best argument. And he's not doing that. That's funny. Discord says, we do consider that. That's why it's manslaughter if a drunk person hits someone while driving. True, true, true. We do consider it. You do get leniency. Yeah, this guy's an ass, bro. I agree, RK. This guy's silly. Yeah, so he's not going to listen to Dream. He's not going to listen to George. And he's not going to listen to Katie. What good is this video? This video is useless. Yeah, this video is literally useless. That's so funny. Jack with a super chat says, can you give me a synopsis of the situation? Someone was raped or someone was assaulted while drunk. I'm confused. Bro, I'm going to be real with you. No. One, it will derail the live show and I hate when streamers do that. And two, I have so many videos on this situation and it's too long to explain. It was a big miscommunication between socially awkward kids and now the internet acts like they were there and they know what's going on. That's the synopsis. All right, dude. Gold star. Fucking dream. Thank you. I care about people and I want people to talk to me if they have anything any problem this guy is seriously breaking down in tears crying over this i never want to hurt anybody i never want i'm sorry he's definitely uh he's definitely he's not definitely right he's just edgy you mean this guy the guy we're watching is he edgy is that what we're saying this guy's edgy I want to do do bad i never want to do evil i never want to contribute to anyone's life in a negative way and i'm sorry i'm sorry katie I really am. This shit was a complete joke. Either he wholeheartedly means all this and is just that pathetic to throw his best friend under the bus for a tummy tickle after spooning with a girl, or this is all just another tactic for sympathy baits uh, to try to get out of the situation the best way as possible. But not only Dream, George's second best friend, Sapnap, put out a tweet saying this. First things first, I want to say that I support Katie, and I think it's incredibly brave to come out and share your story <laughs> in front of everyone, and I hope you're taking care of yourself and are doing well. <laughs> Incre Interesting, like he can't understand it. He has like very low empathy, maybe? Interesting. Well, maybe he's not, he doesn't know how to empathize. So who's he empathizing with? Is there any empathy in this video? Have we seen any display of empathy? Hmm. Has he connected with anyone's story? Oh, interesting. I don't know why anybody wanted me to watch this. Colleen says, I'm curious why people wanted you to react to this. I don't know. But I will say it's interesting that he doesn't connect with anyone in the story. So he doesn't understand Dream. He doesn't under understand the other friend. He doesn't understand George. He doesn't understand Katie. What does this kid understand? His friends did not throw him under the bus. Like George and all of them did not throw, uh, George and Dream and everybody did not throw him under the bus. Like, that's not what happened. They, you can support Katie and support George. I'm supporting Katie and George at the same time. It's not that hard. It was obviously a miscommunication. You know what I mean? Like, it's obviously a miscommunication. Katie is 19 and stupid and misunderstood the situation. She's fucking stunted. It happens. George is 26 and stupid. He's obviously stunted and he mis misconstrued the situation. It happens. It's like, obviously, like, I'm on both their sides. As an old person, as the dignified old person in the group, let me just tell you, bros, this is life. Life is messy. You're going to fuck up, you know? Incredibly brave. This girl's trying to destroy your best friend's life over nothing. And this is what you say? Because of this, I waited before- Yeah, these are good people. George and Dream and all those people who understand that they can support Katie and George, those are good people. I think people who chose sides, people who chose Katie's side or people who chose George's side, I don't trust any of you fuckers. I don't trust any of the fuckers that fully think Katie or George is a bad person. I don't trudge any- I don't trust any of you fuckers with nothing. You're so fucking blinded by your bias. If you think literally, ma'am. For commenting to organize my thoughts. And after seeing all of the facts, it is very clear that Katie is a victim and everyone should support her and stand by her 100%. What? What facts have you seen exactly? And how in your investigation did you not notice that George proved this girl to be a complete liar? These have got to be the worst two friends in the fucking world. I don't know. I think I, I, I always thought that I thought that our friendships, our friendship is just like really genuine. Mm -hmm. um, so I think I think that's one of the biggest things that we have like a bunch who is this is this dream 
Who is this? This man looked different every time I see him. Who is this man? A bunch of genuine friendship. Oh, is this Snapchat or whatever? Sap, sap nap? And we're actually just, we, we are just genuinely having fun with each other. Okay, hold on. Because of this, I'm waiting for a comment to order. After seeing the facts, it's clear that Katie's a victim and everyone should support her and say it by her. I'm really uh, upset as I love George. He's my best friend and there's no way around the fact that he fucked up and needs to take accountability for what happened. I don't think George is a bad person. I don't think he had evil intentions, but it doesn't matter if your actions cause pain. What a, okay, yeah. George apologized as he should have. Yeah, this is great. What are you talking about? This is a great fucking message. Oh my God. No wonder y'all don't have friends because you think your friends can't love you and say like what you did was shitty. Okay, this is beautiful. This is like great. Sap, sap, nap, George, dream, all of them. They're like the trio, the three amigos. No, this is beautiful. This is a great message. Katie was obviously hurt. That sucks. Obviously, George didn't want to do that to her. Katie needs to understand it's authentic and real and two things can be true at once. Genuinely, ooh, the internet's so dumb. No, these people are good people. They know what's up. And I think that's what people like. So his two best friends f***ed him over completely. He's lost hundreds of thousands of followers on all platforms. Mr. Beast took him out of his ad campaign. And numerous other creators have come out in support of Katie, dogpiling him, destroying his reputation. Yeah, but like lots of people came out in favor george's favor too um obviously uh this is a video is three days old but it's it's too biased like he doesn't he doesn't know all over the phantom tummy tickle <laughs> how does he how is this video only three days old and he doesn't have all the facts why does he keep calling it the tummy tickle why does he keep calling it that What's even worse is Katie literally says, don't go to the cops. Like, bro, that's a huge slap in the face of essay victims and survivors. See, I don't trust these people. Why would you go to the cops so they can ignore your testing and not help you? That's what I mean. These people think they know what's happening in the world, but they don't. I think people saying like, Katie's the reason people don't believe real victims. You know why people don't believe real victims? Because people don't think their best friends are rapists. You know? Katie Bugs is ruining the chances for actual victims to have their voices heard. She's not, though, because you don't even believe real victims anyways. You don't even believe victims of SA. Like, I don't know why you're acting like you believe people were raped, bro. Statistics show way otherwise. So interesting. Yeah, this video is cringe, bro. This has got to be the greatest cancellation story of all time. And I would... For example, tickle her. But the two main notable creators who I think had the best coverage on this are Max GGs with just about 100k followers and Amesy with over a million. Starting with my oh, British no. cousin. My friend! He puts out a tweet saying, Rotten hell, you fucking piece of shit. I saw how you ruined my friend's life. Nobody should feel sympathy in whatever lies you're going to spout with your stupid PR team backing you, you buffoon. I wish you and your little freak friends who are complacent in abuse mm. the worst lives ever. You are all fucking horrible and your content sucks dick. Rotten hell for assaulting my friend, George. And plus, I make better Minecraft videos than you. This one, this this one's probably my personal favorite. A little candy cane for us. For sure. Yes. There's actually only this much. That works. <laughs> Max, you're fucking gay. But thank God he gave us the live stream version of this, making for the best thing to come out of this entire situation. Uh, this is this is a this is a fact. What I'm about to tell you is a fact, not not something that you can create an argument out of. I was there, and she cried in my fucking arms. This 19-year-old girl, 18-year-old girl, she cried in my fucking arms because of what you did, George Nofound. And to try, to try and use me, my friends, or anybody else as a scapegoat for your fucking sexual abuse is disgusting. It's fucking disgusting. My friend cried in my fucking arms about this and you're on stream denying it all denying the fucking hurt that you caused to her you and all of your abuse sympathizer friends you are all fucking horrible you are a 26 year old man 27 now trying to fucking put the blame on 18 year olds that you don't fucking know what the fuck is wrong with you you are man myron's looking very white today yo myron looking hello white today bro Damn. Yeah. Alice says, what's with men yelling today? Yo, we've watched so many men yell. He's so sweet. He intends so much. Like this guy obviously like was impacted by Katie crying in his arms. And that's 
you know, that's that's good. That's like good, you know, empathy and all that. But also, oh man, that's a lot. Wait, you a you a you a serious criminal and they Ooh, um see how he's not a serious criminal though? That's my that's my problem with this bubble. Um it's not a serious crime to touch someone's boob unconsensually. I don't know if you guys know that. Like it's not actually a serious crime. You know what's a serious crime? Like murdering someone. Like raping someone. That's pretty serious. I feel like touching someone's boob is like not serious a crime, but it is serious social faux pas. And we should talk about that, maybe, depending on the bubble. So I'm like, mm. Girl, cried in my arms because of what you did. Weeks later, weeks. Of Show loads of love to mm. Katie. Go and watch her vlogs. They're so fucking good. They're so good. These are timeless videos. Timeless. These are the only video. He's a kid, bro. These are kids. They're all kids. I'm watching kids. Why am I watching kids? Who sent me this video? Why did you guys spam this in my comments? Oh my God. He's 18, this one? Oh, they're all babies, bro. They don't even know. This is like... This is something that they're not even going to remember in 20 years or they will remember it. But it'll be like, oh, remember that shit we did when we were 18? Cringe. Like, this is, oh, yeah. Okay. Goes, I feel like I could show my children. These are so fucking incredible. Fully. She is an incredible storyteller, incredible filmmaker, incredible person. <clears throat> like, what's the point of life? I was disassociating. These are timeless videos. Timeless. These that edit was too funny, bro. I fucking hate this kid, bro. It's too funny. These are the only videos I feel like I could show my children. These are so fucking incredible. I understand that many people are angry at my friend group. And I'm going to be honest with you. I don't give a fuck. I have never given a fuck about any hate that I receive. That video of you crying is hilarious. Thank you. I think it's so funny that my friend was sexually assaulted. And I stood up for her. And you think that's funny. Fucking, you are a sick in the head. Go fuck yourself. Uh, anyways. Yeah, that's kind of it. That's that's all I wanted to show for him. <laughs> but now AMZ, with her huge following, made this tweet before George even released his first response. She's autistic. A lot of these people are autistic. I need this to be so clear in y'all's head. Because I know there's mean autists, and then there's, like, sense of justice autists. And even mean autists have a deep sense of justice. Like, I know the audience for Think Before You Sleep, I could feel their autistic sense of justice. I could feel it. Like... I, I I really am trying not to focus on mean autistic boys, but they're really suffering because they have a sense of justice, just like nice autists, but they're mean. So like people look at them and hope they die, but they don't know why people want that because they're mean. But also their sense of justice is so clear to me. Like they're like, we want to help. We want to help. And I'm like, I know you want to help, but you're fucking making it worse. How am I making it worse? Same thing with Amesy and all these people. I watched some interviews with her and like she obviously, first of all, autistic, but obviously wants to help. But her sense of justice is like definitely skewing her perception, which is normal. I mean, think about religious people that think all trans people are groomers. Like why, are, why do they think that? It's not that they just hate trans people. They literally want to protect children. P the road to hell is paved with your good fucking intentions. Stop having such good intentions for the world. Okay. Do you know if any of them are diagnosed? Ainsley is diagnosed. I think Dream is diagnosed with ADHD. And the rest, I think they th they are pretty sure they have it. I don't, I don't know if they are officially diagnosed. Saying, silence is not consent. It will never be consent. I hope you understand whatever bullshit response you and your PR team magically come up with. It will never take back the hurt you've caused on someone who was young <laughs> and should have been safe in your space as a 26-year-old man. Literally saying that there's nothing you can do. You are instantly deemed guilty and there's... When I was... I'll tell you a fucking cringe story. You want to hear this story? I hate this story. Oh, I hate this story. In hindsight, you're like, what the fuck were you thinking? When I was, how old would I have been? 24? 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. Oh, 21? Oh, that makes more sense. 24, I was in Seattle. When I was like 21, that makes sense. So 21, when I was a year older than this Justin Bieber kid, okay? When I was 21, when I was younger than George, 
I had my first adult friend group out of high school. I was like bullied out of high school. <laughs> and I ended up in talk radio spaces and Republican spaces because I was like a conservative. And I went to this meetup with a bunch of libertarians and conservatives and all these other people. And this is like a billion years ago, okay? This is way before terminology like progressive ever came out, okay? And that's how I identify now. But like politically speaking, you know, okay. So I'm in this space. I'm meeting these people. We're having a great time. And one of the guys in the group is like 12 years older. He's great. He's Christian. He's a virgin. He's interesting. He's aggressive. He's like a bear. He's a teacher. He's interesting. You know, he's attractive. Something about him is just like very dominating and like he's very confident. And even his virginity was attractive because he was so confident. And oh, I lied. I said he was 12 years older. That's a lie. He was seven years older than me. My bad. He was 28 at the time, 28, 29, almost 28, 29, 30, depending on what era I'm talking about. But let's say at this age, 28, 29. Okay. So we're having this really, uh, this friendship. It's great. It's blossoming. He was somebody that I considered maybe having sex with for my first. I was 22 when I lost my virginity. I decided not to say yes to him. In my gut of guts, I was like, something, something doesn't feel right about this guy. But I, I liked him. He was my friend. I found out later that he was definitely hoeing around and sleeping with a lot of people, not telling anybody else so he could sleep with other people. And he was definitely unsafe and definitely wasn't getting tested. And a lot of things ended up coming out about him. But one thing that should have been so clear to me at the time, and I didn't get it. And now in hindsight, it's like so clearly bad. But I just didn't get it. Okay. Is I took my 17-year-old sister to come hang out with us, my friends and I, and drink and have fun. And... It was like a normal thing. Like, why not? Like, go have fun, party. It'll be fun. He hit on my sister. And all of us were like, oh, my God, you're being so cringe. Wah, wah, wah. And we were all just like making jokes about it. And my sister was like not thinking much about it. I didn't think much about it, even though I was like, hey, she's like a minor, like back off. I also didn't think he would do anything and he didn't. But he was flirting with her. And that should have been enough. It was the fact that he was nearly 30 flirting with a high schooler he knew was, and he was a high school teacher. So a high school teacher, in hindsight, this is so obvious. Like, it is so fucking obvious now when I think about it. Like, what? What were we thinking? So in hindsight, obviously this was bad. But obviously, like, at the time, we just didn't think about it because what was there to think about, right? Like, it just didn't stick out as a weird thing. So now all these years later... The last time I saw this guy as like a friendship, the last time I saw him, it was really awkward. And I asked him, he like caught him in lies and unsafe sex and all these things. But the one thing he told me that made me go, holy fuck, you're like a bad person. But like, according to my morals and values, now he's much older. Many years have passed. He's like in his mid thirties, having unprotected sex. He tells me about one of his students He's living in Europe at the time, so different rules. It's legal, sort of. One of his students is into him. And he's like, I can't believe she's into me, bro. Like, she's like 17. And I was like, yeah, but she's your student, so absolutely not. And at this time, I was a progressive. At this time, I was in Seattle. At this time, I was much more liberal. And I was like, yeah, you definitely can't fuck with your students, bro. And he goes, yeah, but when she turns 18, it doesn't matter. Plus, the age of consent in, I think, Italy, I don't remember where he was, was like, is way lower. It's like 14, 15. So he's like, yeah, but like, you know, if she wasn't one of my students, it would be legal. And I was like, but you're in your mid thirties and she's a teenager. Why are you even entertaining this? And he was like, well, why not? And I was like, why are you entertaining this? And he's like, it's legal. And I was like, and now in hindsight, it's so much clearer now where I'm like, oh, you just like have a, you, you're inappropriate. Like, sir, you are inappropriate. And then that was it. Our friendship broke up. We never talked again. And that was the end. I don't even know if he's dead. Like, I don't know anything about him. But to this day, it like it all comes back to you. Like all the mistakes you make in life, you're like, what the fuck? Why didn't I say something? Why didn't I think that was weird? Because you don't. Like you're in the situation. You're not thinking about it. And then you realize like, oh, what the fuck? Okay. All of this to say, you know, now we have all of this information and all of these conversations happening and all of this wisdom. We're just figuring it out. And there's so many mistakes along the way that are going to be made. Look, I have a deep fear. I'm going to let another one of those creepers walk by me and I'm not going to recognize them. I am constantly terrified of that, but I want to make sure I'm also being very rational and reasonable and I'm really being objective, even though objectivity is very hard to find because we're all so subjective. We're seeing everything through our perception. It's hard for humans to be objective. I would say impossible. 
because it's very difficult for us to know unless we know ourselves and everybody involved. So again, I tell you this to say, it's not as easy as you think, but as you get older, it will be easier. And even then you'll make, you'll want to make sure you're not just accusing someone of being malicious, whether it's a malicious victim or a malicious predator. Caitlin says, bro, full grown adult and high school relationships are kind of normalized in media. Bro, absolutely. Seth Rogen and Pineapple Express is 25 dating a high schooler. Um, kiss, kiss, what's it called with Drew Barrymore? Kiss, kiss me, kiss me. What is it called? She's literally an, uh, a student at the school and the teacher falls for her. But oh, surprise, she's actually a journalist who's undercover and of age. Yeah, absolutely. It's kind of crazy, bro. It's anyways, all of this to say, okay, it's not as easy and simple as you think. But I know we process it that way because we like to think I would know what to do if I was in that situation. Maybe. There's nothing you could do to stop it. You guys thought Nick is not green was bad for his super mega coverage. Welcome to the fucking Minecraft community. This is not some petty drama. This is not some Twitter thing. I'm not putting my voice into drama that is just a stupid little thing that's gonna blow over tomorrow. This is abuse. There are victims involved in this and you guys are treating it like it's Twitter drama. It's not. This is a serious thing. It is a crime. It is a bad thing. I swear to God, there's some people online that could watch someone literally murder someone and they'd be like, oh, wow. That does happen though. Actually, people will. People will watch someone get ganged and they won't do anything about it. Like humans are animals, dude. We don't think. We'll watch someone literally get assaulted and we'll just wait till it finishes because, well, we don't want to risk our lives. Like human beings are not black and white. It is very difficult to know what is true, what isn't true, what is a crime, what isn't a crime. What does it matter if it's a crime? Does it even matter? What are your values? Where are your morals? Now he's getting cancelled? You can only pray and hope that these people end up getting accused one day as well and have to deal with the same standards they pushed onto other people. You know, guilty until proven- Okay, not impressive. That was out of context. That was for Wilbur, not George, though. Okay, I thought so. I was so confused why they were showing that clip because I was like, I thought this was before. Okay, wait. I think you're right. I think you're right. Can anyone else confirm that? Because I actually do think you're right. I thought when I looked up Amesley- uh, that was the only clip I found, but it was before the allegation. So I was confused about who that was about. I didn't think that was about George. Cause if that's about Wilbur, Wilbur's hella, like he got problems, bro. For sure. Super toxic. I don't know if he need. I don't know if it's a crime. Like, I don't know if he needs to go to prison, but he definitely needs some fucking therapy. Tafka says, I'm actually starting to think I'm on the spectrum, but the high functioning side, my views on everything from conversation to relationships were far too complicated when I was younger, bro. Things feel so much clearer when I look at everyone in this space as autistic or neurodivergent, because I'm like, this is why everyone's so black and white and full of justice and just can't think past their own fucking nose, but also mean well, but also, oh my God. Even innocent, it's gonna be a real bitch to deal with when it comes around to you. In a world of cruelty, you can be kind. Look after yourselves. March 10th, 2024. Okay. Good guy, Amesy. Crime! And these are supposed to be the good guys in this situation too. Destroying this guy's career and life for literally nothing. And they won. Like, George now for forever will have these accusations following him for the rest of his life. It's not that deep. They won't. He'll get over it. Chris Brown still makes music. Everybody relax. If anytime you search his name, he's always going to have sexual assault allegations. For the uh, AMZ did make a stream about Wilbur yelling at him the same day Shelby did hers. Okay, Wilbur is also autistic. Speaking of MC players and autism pipeline, I believe it. Man, the autism is so real. Yeah, that was for Wilbur. And yes, Wilbur is more guilty than George. Oh, Wilbur be hella guilty. But also therapy. I don't think prison time is going to help people. I don't believe in prisons. I only believe in prisons for the absolutely like un unable to rehabilitate people. And they still think we should treat them with kindness and dignity. Just because someone's an asshole doesn't mean you need to be. So, I mean, you know, <laughs> sometimes it's fun though. But I will say Wilbur needs like some intensive therapy and some proper diagnoses. And um, yeah, I mean, Shelby needs therapy. Everyone needs therapy rest of his online life, career, anytime he wants to interact with a girl in the future, she's going to be able to Google his name and Yeah, but like, it's not going to matter, bro. Like she'll just read the story and decide on her own. And also like at this point, everyone's going to have an accusation against them. Who's a public figure. It's like, really, you got to get over it. Find out that he's been accused of sexual assault before. It's exactly what happened with Dream. And I don't believe all people who accuse people of sexual assault should be held to the same standard because I do think some people are doing it because they really are having an experience. I think it's different when it's like malicious and vindictive and slander and when it's someone who really thought they had an experience. I also don't think it's the same kind of crime. I think it's a different crime.
So I don't think like, I don't believe an eye for an eye. I think you should be appropriate. And I think appropriateness is, is a spectrum, right? if not worse it's the same situation just a few months apart but you know it's hard to show that much sympathy to dream or really anyone else everyone in this whole minecraft community because of the way they go about handling these situations all of this lately has completely brought to light that this whole minecraft scene is full of complete rats and snakes that will uh he would know he's ratty himself bro this boy a rat too i can tell throw even their closest friends under the bus if it means that it helps restore Nah, nah, this guy, this guy's way too much like Myron, where he wants, like, blind loyalty, and he doesn't hold his friends accountable. This guy would never hold his friends accountable. They stood by George. George agreed. That's what I'm saying. He's not listening to George. George apologized to Katie, which was appropriate, and he still said, I didn't intend to do this. I'm sorry it was read that way. That's reasonable, right? This guy right here, this guy, not, not Dream, the guy who's talking, Justin Bieber, nah, he's blind loyalty guy. Him and Myron should get married restore their public reputation socially all of them are in desperate hope to not get eaten by their audience and they'll do anything it's not it's about morals and values if you didn't intend to hurt someone and you hurt someone you should apologize and then they should move the fuck on if they don't move the fuck on that's the shitty part if you hurt someone and you didn't mean to you should be like hey really love you i do not want to hurt you i don't want to hurt you so we got to figure out how to move past this. And then if they can, can. But if they don't let it go and they don't move on, they're the shit person because they're not doing their end of the bargain. Because you can't hold people accountable for things they didn't intend to do. You can't. It makes no fucking sense. Okay? This is what I learned in therapy. My parents carried on generational curses because they were given generational curses. I can't hold them accountable. I can only ask them to be aware of the ways they've impacted me. They apologize. I accept, doesn't change the fact that I have trauma. Now I get to deal with the trauma, right? Which in remission, four years, borderline, depression, anxiety, pfft, four years, baby, no sadness. Let's go. Sorry, no depression. Let's go. Sadness is different. Sadness is an emotion. It comes and goes. But the point is, is I had to accept that my parents needed to accept that we are going to impact each other because we all have issues and that it's our jobs to move the fuck on when somebody has acknowledged it in a real way. Because everyone is holding generational curses inside them. And then we have to like live our whole life with all of this trauma. And then we have to dismantle it. And everyone has it on a different spectrum. Thing to make sure that doesn't happen. And this is why you can make the argument that a certain amount of this is deserved. Because they all take... No, Monolith says he should sue her for slander. Absolutely not. That's not going to clear his name. That's not how it works. And it would be cruel to do that to a 19-year-old who did not intend to do this. And George is not going to be hurt forever over these accusations. Chris Brown still has a job. ...part in feeding this monster of an audience and then acts... No, Katie needs to understand the context that he didn't actually hurt her. No, George hurt Katie. You cannot take away the fact that George hurt Katie. He just didn't mean to hurt Katie. Just like when your parents uh, like punish you as a child, they didn't mean to hurt you. They thought they were helping you or they thought it was okay, but it obviously was the bad decision to make. People can hurt you without meaning to hurt you. So Kate, George hurt Katie, which he apologized for, without meaning to. Katie has to learn that he really didn't mean to hurt her. George already admitted to hurting Katie. George literally said, I'm sorry, Katie, I hurt you. Cool. Thanks, George. We appreciate that. Katie, he didn't mean to do it. The problem is, is as far as we know, Katie might still believe George intended to hurt her. But George did hurt Katie. He admitted to it. You guys don't understand the nuance of what it means to be a person because you're so convinced this is black and white. George already admitted he hurt her. All of the guys admitted it. It's okay. Sometimes we hurt people. Now... We have to learn to get past it and not repeat actions and prevent it in the future. How did he hurt her exactly? I don't e Sir, you need to watch all the videos I've made about this. I don't know how you missed the story. Prize when it comes Go watch George's video, bro. ...to them when it's their time to pay the tax. Perpetually enabling this behavior to keep it going, forever calling out other people for the smallest, most insignificant things, trying to destroy their career over nothing at all. And you know, this is gonna happen until it eats everyone. Even George, I didn't harp on it too much, but this guy was pretty pathetic throughout this whole entire situation. I, I mean, he would bend the knee multiple times and apologize way too much. Because he's a human with empathy and he cares about people. See how they're making fun of George for be for caring? They are miscategorizing Katie, and because they don't understand Katie, they keep assuming she's someone she's not, 
and they're putting an image on her that just isn't true. Listen to George. He's the victim. Listen to Katie. She is the victim. Listen to the two people involved and nobody's doing that. They're just picking a side because it pushes their agenda. To a girl who wants to end you and end your life. Wrong. God says my point is just because I apologize for someone's feelings doesn't mean they're valid. He's not apologizing for feelings. He's apologizing for fucking touching her boob. Her feelings are her own. He's not apologizing for hurting her feelings, though that's a good apology too. He's apologizing for touching her without her consent. He's apologizing for misreading the situation and touching her without her consent because he misread the situation. And she needs to apologize for not communicating clear because they could have avoided this whole thing. Her feelings are valid. They're happening. Her actions are unreasonable. That's why she never should have posted the video. Her feelings are valid. They're happening. His guilt is valid. He touched her without asking. Okay. He's apologizing for putting her in a situation where he misread the situation. She needs to apologize for, for putting him in a situation where she misread the situation. That's why she's probably taking down the stuff she did because she's realizing that. Okay. So don't apologize unless you mean it because you know how you impacted someone. So if you apologize to people, you better mean it because that means you understand why they're there. And then that person who accepts the apology, don't accept it unless you really understand why they're apologizing. Like, what the fuck was this tweet, man? This is the problem. And honestly, the reason why a person like Katie even made her allegation in the first place is because you guys promote this culture, enabling this behavior, allowing a person like Katie to come to the surface and accuse you later down the line. So until any of you guys figure out how to grow a backbone and spine and defend yourself from clear bullshit- This guy can't even buy a beer. He's so young, bro. He can't even rent his own car. What is Justin Bieber even talking about? Accusations. This will continue forever and will never stop. Oh my gosh. You know what would cease and desist all of this? Men. Get men off the planet. Get humans. All humans. Just kidding. Just, just, just the straight ones. I'm just kidding. Just kidding. Just kidding. No, but seriously, like this kid is so funny. He's probably fucking autistic too. Nah, he looks more ADHD, honestly. I don't even know what that means. He looks something though. I don't know about autism. He doesn't look autistic. And for all those people that are like, Brittany, people can't look a certain way. Are you sure about that? You sure about that? Because I for sure feel like I look autistic. <laughs> so the choice is yours. Oh, wow. Thanks, Dad. Damn, that video was sucky, bro. It's not even over. Oh, my God. He's I can't watch this anymore. It's so bad. This is such a bad video. Great editing. Great editing. Such a bad take. Great editing, though. Such a bad take. And that's where the story ended, but Ugh. out of complete left field, weeks after her first initial allegation stream, Katie then went live to make yet another response where she changes her story again. I can't. Oh, bro. This is an incredibly painful video to get through. I can't do it. Can I quit? Oh, can I quit? Oh, this is so painful. Claiming that George now groped and fondled her tits. The one biggest thing that I want to clear up, it is fucking sexual assault, okay? I'm not going to apologize, say that it isn't sexual assault, that I'm not a sexual assault victim. <laughs> the touching that he has admitted, has admitted to many times, he felt up my tits. He stuck his hand up my shirt, under my bra, and felt up fondled, whatever you want to say. He felt up my tits. Mind you, up until this point, it's been understood that the main allegation is that he touched and tickled her. Yeah, like at the end of the day, look, I, I we're rehashing this. I already have so many videos on this. There's no reason for us to rehash it. I will say this. Um, editing's fire. Content sucks. But that's only because like you don't know anything yet and you're a kid and you're a baby and I get it. Um, so yeah, uh, shout out to this kid, Larix, L-E-R-I-X. Here, I'll link it if you guys want to check out the video yourself. Uh, he's just a baby boy. He's just a sweet little Justin Bieber baby boy. He doesn't know anything about grown up life. You know what I mean? He just thinks he does. So he's lecturing the internet, um, which makes sense. Like we're all young and we lecture the internet. Yeah. Um, oof, I do. I did not, I did not like I just think it's not very well thought out. But, you know, it makes sense for his bubble and where he's coming from and his age group and um, his relationship with these things. I think that all kind of makes sense that he's coming from that perspective. Um, <laughs> Kay says, I checked out a while ago. This video isn't stimulating. Yeah. I mean, we've already rehashed it. Look, I'm glad I tried another person's video. But genuinely, 
I just think there was a lot of misinformation in this video. Uh, a lot of the facts were wrong. He's not listening to Katie, George, or Dream. He's not listening to their positions. He's mocking all the victims involved. He's calling George a victim and then mocking him for being a pussy. I don't even know what to do with that. You know what I mean? Like, we really don't want to listen to victims, do we? Whether they're men or women, huh? Stuff in my head in real life while I'm dead My belly's being fed and I'm okay I'm just fine, yet all I do is whine Not to you in my mind, cause I know I don't make sense I've been nothing but blessed So why's my life a mess? Please tell me cause I'm sick of thinking yeah, I'm sick of reaching out for the truth And living life as a fool Dun, da, 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 da. 